well located. So this is my Sig Sawyer MPX 177 CO2 powered air rifle. I bought this about two or three weeks ago and it's never really worked properly and that led me into the usual thing that you do when you buy something that doesn't work. You, you you go to YouTube and see what other people are saying about it. Generally, you should do that before you buy something, but, but I didn't on this occasion. So this is a, a really good looking air gun and, and it promises much and, deli <laughs> and delivers little. And one of the things that I noticed when I was doing, doing the rounds on YouTube and on Google and, and all the usual places is that there wasn't a single video that had everything in one place. So uh, people had specific problems with it that they were explaining and people were given opinions about how it worked. And, and, and most of it was right and, and people certainly have problems, uh, but, but no one video covered it all. So I'm going to try and uh, I'll try and kind of cover that and, and go over the teardown as well, because it's if, if, if you've just picked it up and, and it doesn't work and you're thinking, God, what do I do with this? It's not an easy gun to take apart. It's uh, <laughs> once you've got it apart, it's not it's not easy to to figure out what's going on. There's a lot going on in the gun, and a lot of it you can ignore, uh, but a lot of it you unfortunately can't ignore. So uh, let's have a look and and well, let's start by what you have to unscrew to get into. So as you can see, I've already this gun is apart. It's already in bits, but I've kind of put things back together so that I can show you exactly how it is that you that it comes apart. Uh, the first thing to note is, is that all the action on the inside of the gun is attached to the left hand side casing. So if you if you hold the gun out in front of you, everything is attached to the left hand side casing. It, it comes apart like this and it's all, it's all, it's all on the left hand side. There is one small part of the action on the right hand side of the casing uh, which is the ambidextrous safety which if like me it flies off and you can't find it, it did that for me uh, and, and and you see this thing and you think oh where the hell did that come from that, that is the only thing that's attached to the right hand side of the casing everything else is on the left hand side I don't know if my camera's turning this around but 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 you'll you'll see what I mean Okay, so it's just important to remember that when you're taking it apart, you want to have uh, the left-hand side of the gun down on the table uh, flat, because if you don't, there is a good chance that just about everything inside the gun will will spring off and disappear over the horizon. So what do you unscrew? Well, the first thing you need to do is take any sights off the top rail here. You, you'll have either an, your iron sights on there if you've if you've just taken out the box. They need to come off. There's a couple of small Picatinny rails uh, here that come off. I took them off. I don't know if they need to come off, but but they I took them off. You then have the the external barrel shroud, which is this big hard bit of plastic. Here you've got one, two, three, four screws and two allen bolts here and that's uh, these two allen bolts are replicated on the other side. Once those are off you do need a flathead screwdriver to, to, lever, to lever these off. One thing I will say about this gun, whoever was in charge of building the casing and the outside parts of it did a really good job. It fits together really tightly. Whoever was in charge of doing the inside of the gun I think they got, I don't know who did that, but it wasn't, they weren't as good as the people that did the outside of the gun. So once you've got one, two, three, four, and then these two Allen bolts off, and bear in mind that there's there's two on either side, then this just lifts off. You need to pry it apart though, so it's just a case of prying it apart. Be aware, on the flip side of this, you have captive, tiny wee captive nuts that the screws screw into. And, and they obviously fall out and disappear. They're just standard nuts, so you can get replacements. But once that's off, uh, you can now see the uh, the the barrel, and it's the, the barrel itself has a has a, a I don't know a primary shroud, but we'll get to that. 
Uh, once that's done, you're on to the main body of the gun. Now, obviously, with the with the stock removed, it's something over there. I've got an I've got a high pressure air bottle attached here just for testing, and also because it's supposed to work better with high pressure, but that doesn't. That's not true either. <laughs> so what can you say? So you have um, obviously take the magazine out of the way. You don't need that in place. You've got a large Phillips head screwdriver inside the handle. You need to flip up the. The, the, the bottom, there's a wee storage space to uh, put your cocaine in there. Uh, there's a, a Phillips head screw that comes out there and that just pulls off. Uh, and that uncovers this screw here which is well hidden. So you've got two screws at either end, one, two, three, four. You've got a screw here in the middle and then you've got one, two, three down the bottom and you've got a smaller screw up here by the charging handle. So I think that's nine altogether. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one is a small screw. It's a tiny wee thing. This one is a, a longer version of the screws that go everywhere else. So you can't really mix it up. It's, you're not going to get mixed up. The screws will only go one place. The only one that you might get mixed up is the extra long screw that, that goes into there, which is, which is this, uh, this screw here. The others are just standard length. So once you've got all those screws out there, <laughs> <laughs> this is where the fun begins. So, as I say, that it fits together very well, the case, and unfortunately what's inside is a bit of a dog's dinner, but again with a flat-headed screwdriver, uh, you can come in under here to pry it open and come in under here. It fits very tightly at either end where these four screws uh, screws go, and that's where, that's where the tight fitting is. And it's just a case of uh, manoeuvring it off with your, with your screwdriver thusly being very careful not to allow anything to disappear off into the horizon. So this is the inside of the right hand side of the gun and as this is the this is the ambidextrous safety. The thing that comes away is this, this wee thing here. So it's just a wee spring loaded and it's what gives the it's what gives the safety catch its snap when you when you turn it but that sometimes it falls off. That's where that small part goes. It usually lands somewhere in here. I did lose sight of it at one point and, and panicked a wee bit. Man, I didn't panic, that's an overreaction. But that's where it goes. That's the way round it goes, like that. And it just gives the safety catch on that side of the gun that sort of firm snap feeling. So let's get this out of the way. Right, hopefully I've brought another light in, so hopefully you can see this a wee bit more clearly. Basically you've got your, your trigger group and your feed mechanism and then you've got your air circuit here. That that's the that's the that's the it's a simple enough design but it's just not been very well executed. Uh, there are not, there are a number of videos on online and, and I don't I'm not claiming that I've got this absolutely correct uh, but there are some misleading videos online that aren't quite right. Uh, this charging handle, for example, on the gun, it, it is actually a charging handle. It does actually charge the gun. The gun is a, a blowback me mechanism for reloading. Uh, uh, and, and on first firing, you have to charge it. You have to cock the gun. You have to get the blowback mechanism in the, in the rearward position in order for it to move forward and actuate and if it worked properly for the blowback mechanism to recock the gun, that's what this gun isn't doing. My version of this dog's dinner isn't recocking. It does everything else, but it doesn't do that. So that's all the charging handle does. It just pulls back the blowback mechanism, and I'll get into that. That's all it does. Uh, in terms of the belt and how it feeds, uh, do I have a belt here? I do belts in the magazine here. The belt sits in the magazine. Thusly, it's just a, an endless belt. It doesn't matter where the belt goes in the magazine because it actually, when it loops around it, it meets itself. So you, you can you don't have to line it up with the start or the finish. It just rotates all the way around. Uh, and the mechanism for feeding this is 100% purely down to the trigger pull. The trigger pull in this gun actually is, is quite good for a self-indexing rifle. I've got Crossman 1077s. I've also got a ta an ASG TAC repeat and the trigger pull on that is mental. It's a really good gun, it's powerful, but 
you know, kids can't work it because the trigger pull, it's like there's about an inch of like pull and then in the last, you, the last sort of like an inch, let, let, let's stay metric, there's about two centimetres of pull in the last two millimetres are, are what actually sets the gun off and, and a lot of and kids for example just can't do it because it's too heavy. This on the other hand is actually quite good, the, the trigger pulls is not too long and it's not too heavy and it's quite short between the the mechanism that lines the pellet up on the belt here and it actually going off. It's a thing that, that if you've got guns that, that self-index you, you'll, you'll know what I mean when I say that. So the trigger when you pull it what it does is uh, it actuates. I'm not going to pull it because it'll all spring off. But but this part of the gun, this part of the mechanism, uh, m moves the the belt in the magazine here in, in the magazine, and this part of the mechanism here comes down. If we just hold everything in, you can see what happens. You can see this grabs onto these teeth and and, and lines the the belt up. These come down and are supposed to pull this nipple, I'm calling it a nipple, yes, I'm going to say that again, this nipple pulls this nipple forward against the the belt and it's supposed to seal, haha, <laughs> it's supposed to seal the belt uh, and the pellet up against the, if you can see that, it's supposed to seal the pellet and the belt and then up against the barrel assembly here psh, and the pellet goes out but this is what my gun isn't doing. It, it's a flimsy sort of, it's quite flimsy I, 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 and I'm surprised anyone <laughs> surprised anyone thought that would work. However, it's quite simple, it's just not very well engineered. So what's the next phase for talking? Well let's talk about the barrel side and the air side, okay? So just to summarise, the trigger here operates uh, the feed for the belt here, it operates the nipple here which presses the, the belt in the magazine up against the barrel assembly so that there's a good seal there so that the air just goes along the barrel or it should do. This sear here, the trigger obviously operates the sear which releases the blowback mechanism which is this thing here which I'm, I'm calling that the pin carrier, the firing pin carrier and I'll get to that. It lets that slam forward powered by this spring here. This is just a, a plastic, it's like a, pla a plastic with a spring in it. And, uh, and the trigger pulls that sear down and, and allows that to fire forward, sets all this off in here, Psh, pellet goes that way, air goes this way behind the pellet and it's supposed to come back and push this back to recock the gun locking on that sear and then you pull the trigger again and it all happens again. Uh, and, and and that's obviously what someone at SIG thought, but it isn't actually what happens. Right, so uh, barrel side, air side. So let's talk about the barrel side, okay? The barrel comes apart. It's actually a, a stainless steel barrel in, in, in underneath the shroud and, and what will probably happen as well is, is at some point this will all fall apart. It does come off very easily. It, it's kind of coming in three parts. The barrel and the shroud, there's this here which is basically a it's a it, it's what the barrel screws into I'm not going to take it apart because it's a pain in the arse but it's what the barrel screws into and then this I'm going to call the 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 barrel the barrel belt interface let's call it that that's a good name for it so basically when you fire the gun that nipple see that word again, nipple presses against the belt which presses against the barrel belt interface and it's supposed to seal in this, that there must be a heck of a lot of air or CO2 depending on what you're using that escapes here. I think the gun loses a lot of power, there's no seals here. I tell you what, as a wee treat I'll take that apart, it's very simple. Uh, basically it all lifts out but you can actually get a suppressor adapter for this gun if you just unscrew the flash suppressor thingy. Is that what it's called? We don't really have guns in Scotland, so we don't know what these things are called. Unless you watch Demolition Ranch, in which case you might do. I do, but I forget. This is the barrel which just unscrews, and that comes out. There you go, and you can, if you are, you can use this as a straw if you want, because it's not much use as an air rifle barrel. So you can just use that for 
for your milkshakes, that's where that is, and this all lifts out. So you've got your barrel shroud here, it's quite a heavy bit of metal, gives the gun a lot of weight. And then you've got these items, so that's your, what did we call that? That was the barrel belt interface, that's what we're calling that. You need to be careful, they're not symmetrical, so these only go in one way, which kind of helps, but also kind of doesn't. And then you've got this thing here, which is what your barrel screws into. You'll notice that you've got the 177 barrel here, and you can burl it round and swap it for a 2-2 barrel. I don't know if you can see that. This is slightly bigger than that, that's why that is. So but you've got a 177, so putting it back together. Uh, this goes in like so. This is what your secondary shroud screws into, by the way, just a wee bit of bonus information there. We put our milkshake straw back in there, tighten it up like so, high quality stuff. And then we put our flash suppressor for all that bright air that comes out the end of the gun goes back there like so. So that's the barrel side. You've got your belt barrel transition unit. <laughs> Just make things up now. You've got your threaded unit that the barrel threads into, then you've got your barrel shroud and, and flash suppressor.